Oh wait, is that a third one? Whoa! Yes, 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 yes! Guys! <laughs> oh, it's a <laughs> Look at that sweet baby! That is a beautiful salamander. <laughs> He's big! I'm Jocelyn Stalker. I'm the spatial ecologist at the Tennessee Aquarium Conservation Institute. We're out here at Prentice Cooper State Forest. We're here to try to see what sort of salamanders are out and moving today. We are near some vernal pools, which are some temporary wetlands that are formed during the rainy season and they dry out during the dry season. And because of their unique ecology, there are some species that use them that can't use other types of habitat for breeding. So we're really hoping to see those types of species, but we're gonna look around and see what sort of diversity we can find out here. It's a really foggy, super humid, humid and drizzly raining day. So there's not a lot of hikers out here joining us, but this is actually the perfect weather for salamanders. Anyone that was down under the ground that was fossorial while it was still really cold out is now come to the surface and we can probably find them by looking through leaf litter and flipping rocks and logs. So that's what we're gonna do. So, let's see what we can find. Yeah, so I just kind of do a, a scoop and then you're just gonna carefully sift through putting the leaves that you got from the water back into the water and see if you can find any pals. Who is it? Kind of looks like a mole salamander. <laughs> well, it sure does! There's all kinds of different species of salamanders that we can find in here. Any species of salamander that lays their eggs aquatically in the area um, that doesn't need that water to be flowing might lay their eggs in one of these vernal pools because they're gonna continue to be wet for a couple more months. So there's plenty of time for those eggs to develop into adults and move on out before it dries out. But there are some species that not only might use the vernal pool, but have to use the vernal pool and that's the only way that their eggs can reach adulthood, and that's because some species are really prone to predation by fish. And a pool like this that is dry for part of the year is not going to have fish in it. So those eggs have a much higher chance of survival to adulthood when they don't have that competition from predatory fish feeding on the eggs. So that'll be species like the spotted salamander that we are hoping to find today. They can only reproduce when they have vernal pools to lay their eggs in. But the mole salamander like we just find, they can lay their eggs in permanent wetlands as well, but they will lay them in temporary wetlands like this. And that's why we found that salamander right there. The eggs of a salamander look like gelatinous blobs stuck together just sort of a mass of clear jello. And you can kind of tell that there's circular lumps within that. And as the eggs develop, they will have a black interior that gets darker and larger. That's the, the developing salamander itself. And the salamanders that lay their eggs in here, they will attach it to vegetation that's growing in the water. They'll use anything to sort of get it to cling to the surface. So like these piles of floating leaves, and they might even lay it on top of the detritus that's on the bottom of the pool. So as I'm netting, I'm being careful not to go and disturb an egg mass because you don't want to disturb those developing embryos. Right now, I don't see any egg masses. So that makes me think that the salamanders are just now arriving. They probably haven't started their breeding yet. And that mole salamander that we just found, I think that's a male because he has a swollen cloaca. And the males typically do arrive first before the females. So 
everything that I'm finding so far is kind of pointing towards they're here, but they're not actively breeding yet. Jocelyn, what do you love about days like this? Everything. <laughs> um, I love the opportunity to come out into the mountains for my job. And it's, I don't know, there's something kind of magical to me about going out to this place where nobody is. When we think of life, a lot of times we think of other humans and you come out to this and you might think, oh my gosh, it's dead out here. But on a day like this, you're gonna have extra luck finding wildlife, finding these salamanders, and you, you might feel totally alone, and then you flip a log, and there's a little life down there. And I think that's really cool. Vernal pools form at low points in the topography, so where there's a dip in elevation. They form during the, the rainier months, due to rainfall or snowmelt if you're in an area that does have snowmelt. And it really is very much just like a puddle on a, on a slightly larger scale. So it's just excess water that's gathering in a depression in the landscape. And it stays there until the weather turns dry enough, typically in the late spring or in the summer, that that water is all completely evaporated out. Most salamanders go back to the exact vernal pool that they were born in. So approximately 85% of them are actually homing back to their location of birth and that's where they're going to lay their own eggs and where they are going to breed. How they detect the wetlands or how they know where to go, I honestly don't know, but it's really interesting. I'll talk about the mole salamander because we found one of those earlier. Those salamanders can live up to maybe around two decades in the wild. So it's possible that that salamander that we just dipped up has was here 10 years ago and is here today as well. Here is actually the salamander diversity hotspot of the world. So it's a really good area to study lots of species of amphibians and reptiles. And specifically, what is it about salamanders that gets you so excited? I like that they're slimy. I know that's like a weird and silly thing, but um, there's not a lot of not a lot of animals that we see very often that have to stay moist, that they have to keep their skin wet, that they're slimy like that. And so holding them is just more fun to me than holding something else. Um, you know, I get to pet my dogs at home all the time, and so there's not much excitement to me in, in touching a mouse or anything like that, but a slimy sound manner is really fun. I like getting to, to go into rural areas and tromp through wetlands like this. I like getting my hands dirty and messy and going into fields and stuff like that. And that's sort of the habitat that they're found in. But another thing about salamanders is that they are also surprisingly widespread. And so even in degraded streams, you might not find a high diversity of salamanders, but you can find some really common species like the spotted dusky salamander or the zigzag salamander. Those are gonna be around everywhere. And so it's really pleasurable in that even if you're going out somewhere close or you're going out to somewhere relatively urban, you can still see a salamander, but it doesn't make it any less special when you go to a really specialized habitat or a really remote area to a really specific locality and you find something really rare. And there are lots of uncommon and rare species in the area to go out and find. And so there's always sort of an exciting chase, an exciting venture to go on.